Hey guys, it's Dawn here today, and today I want to go over uh, knee protection and insoles. I um, am revising my my thing about knee protection because of my 140 mile, the crash that I had at my 140 mile ride. Um, it, it, it was dumb and I'm really mad at myself because I know better. Um, the I have worn the Liat dual access um, dual access uh, knee, knee and shin guards since day one. Uh, it's something that is pretty much a given. Yeah, it, those are great, excellent protection, so just get them. Um, or get ones that are even more expensive and even better. Um, but they themselves are excellent. I have been wearing them from day one. The ones that I got were the small slash mediums. The sizing on these are weird because they come in these the sizes small slash medium or large slash extra large. So I had originally gotten the small mediums. Um, <clears throat> I did find out that um, I, I do want my daughter to have better knee protection. And I found uh, she's eight. She just turned eight years old now. So found out that she can wear these if I just modify the strap. I've modified this strap already because when I first got these, um, the straps were too short for me. So I modified them. All you need to do is get a seam ripper, remove the loop part of the Velcro, move it, oh, uh, yeah, seam ripper to remove the stitching so that you can take off the loop, move it down the strap to where you want it, and then sew it back on. If you can, do a reinforced double stitch um, and leave the, the tip with the hook part intact. And once it's in place, it'll just change, make it tighter or looser. So I've already done that to make these looser for me. <clears throat> um, and now I have to change them back to make them tighter for her. But the size difference is huge. Um, and it's, it's a significant size difference. And it's just funny because they both fit me. It's just, uh, they both fit me, they both fit me well, and they both protect me. It just depends on the circumstances, right? So she, these are gonna go to her. A little bit of rash from my crash and stuff. But otherwise, I mean, they're still functionally perfect. It's just that the padding inside is not that great. And I knew that, and that's why I'm a little I'm a lot annoyed at myself because I know better. These provide um, hard armor. They deflect first impact forces, which is excellent. But after your first impact, you also have forces that get through and you need shock absorption. And this doesn't have a lot of shock absorption. So um, remember in my Liat 6.5 video where I talked about how I had gotten the Sastec, Sastec Phantom Joint Protection armor and that's this these are ce level 2 um armor uh standalone armor bits that you can get uh to replace ce level 1. i love these they're amazing they're so thin they're so nice what i don't like about them is that they don't form fit well uh without ruffling and so yeah you saw this on the liats and i was trying to live with it but finally i wasn't i decided not to because um fit is very important and even though the stock ones are only ce level one they are preformed they wrap around and it's like very little chance that that's going to move away upon impact which is very important because if it moves away it doesn't matter if it's level one or level two or level a thousand if it moves away it moves away it's not there so fit is very important so i decided i'm going to stick with the preformed armor in there and that's been fine and I'm going to use uh, these uh, somewhere else. So I may put these ones in my hip, but um, they don't fit in the hip pockets very well. The It comes in a set of four, two shorter ones and two longer ones. The longer ones are now in my knees. So both knees now have level two um, impact protection. And these ones, I'm going to try to put them in my hips. I'm going to see. I don't know. The pockets aren't, aren't that great for that um, and then these will go over oh before that another thing I found out is that um, a lot of EUC people they actually ride in knee supports because 
um, you know, knee pain, right? Our knees are our shock. Our knees are our suspension, so and shock absorption. So they they're taking quite a bit of abuse. I got a few different ones to try out. I've already decided that these ones I don't like. These straps are just going to make it too bulky and and not so great. Um, the sleeve one is an option if you need a slim thing. This will this will offer you um, strength protection. Wait. <laughs> Compression, um, compression, what did they do? A little bit of warmth? I don't know. I've never worn knee thingies before. But um, the, the ones, the style that was recommended to me by Sam was these. And this has um, supports on the sides and it has a patellar gel. And the patellar gel just it feels lovely. And it's gel, so that that is going to absorb some impact forces, so that my bony knees aren't just smacking straight into the ground. I mean, it really hurt. Um, and then it's got some nice supports on the sides as well. And then it has that that whole X thing that these things have. I don't know. There's a lot of voodoo in these things. So you, you see that X design in the purple so it's you know stabilization and warmth and it's a really nice knit material and and it's comfy and all that i haven't i have my last riding video i put on i was wearing these with the new armor in there um i still have to try these ones out but i don't know if it's going to be too bit bulky if it's going to bind my knees it's going to make my knees too hard to bend it's, and that in itself is might throw things off so i don't know yet i still have to try it out <clears throat> but um at the most or whatever it'll be these underneath then my pants with the kevlar lining and then my level two armor <laughs> and then my liats over it um so my knees will be protected. Now, the liats are, are great. You saw the size difference. Ow, what did I just do? Ah, that hurt. Um, and I, I love them. It's just that the padding is eh, not very good. Um, some, some tips and tricks about these. If you want to, you can add silicone to the inside of them to make them more non-slippy. So you see how, you know, this, this silicone thingy, well, you can do that yourself. You can just buy the silicone and um, draw little zigzaggy lines in there, whatever you want, make them non-slip. Um, I haven't had any problems with them slipping, so I don't need to do that. Another thing that you can do if you're having an issue um, is, Okay, what I do is I take this middle one and I shove it right into the center up here. And so then the bulge of my calf is holding it on. And then this one, I actually have the bottom one a little bit looser because I found that when I have it super tight, this part digs into my shin and it hurts. It's like it levers it. But that might be a break-in thing because I remember that happening um, on, on those other ones, um, the small ones, when I first got them. And now, I, I mean, I haven't remembered them doing that at all recently. Um, another thing that you can do is you can crisscross the last two straps, the bottom two straps. So your middle strap will connect to the bottom hole and your bottom strap is going to connect to the middle hole and you're going to crisscross in the back. That can help with slippage. Another thing that people have done is um, uh, Marty and I think Jennifer has mentioned this. So th these aren't my ideas. These are all everyone else's. I mean, I don't know anything. So I learned everything from everyone else anyways. So give everyone else a credit. But anyways, there's, you know, these holes over here, well, you can just drill another hole over here and then you can pop this in and make an even bigger X. Um, and that can also hold it in. Like I said, I haven't had any problems with them. They've been staying on me just fine. Now I did notice that um, the bigger ones is going to give me more coverage. It's longer at the bottom 
it's longer at the top and this curves all the way and hugs my knee all the way around it's just a little bit more of a shallow fit yes let me just scooch all over the floor here get myself all proper and dirty all right knee so it will end it covers to about right here for the smalls and I did not move my finger and you see how this covers down to there. Okay. So this just covers more. It's a bigger, this little cup in here for your knee. Well, you get a bigger cup with the bigger one. So they both fit. So the size, if you're, if you're worried about trying to pick the right size, I don't think that the size is, is necessarily so much about whether or not it'll fit you but because both of these are fitting me fine i can make them work um the only thing is that these ones i didn't have to adjust the strap length and now that i'm adding all this other stuff underneath my knees i definitely appreciate having the the bigger cup area and um, i can already feel that just because it's cupping my whole knee around here I mean, I'm not even strapped in and it hugs it, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, got you, like got you versus this one is just kind of like kind of perched, just kind of perched on top. It, it's not giving me that same feel like, you know, I got you. So, but of course I got this bulky armor underneath. So I've now made my whole knee a lot bigger. Yeah, this one like is just hugging me. So that's really nice. Okay. So. Um, knees so that's all covered um, the Kevlar lining absolutely a must uh, there has been an EUC rider that has uh, uh, crashed um, the Abrams cut out on him 28 miles an hour and in that crash somehow burned straight through the the uh, gear burned through the gear burned through the Kevlar lining burned uh, burned the pad um, now i'm not going to go into all the details about it but in my opinion the gear didn't fail on him it wasn't that the gear failed to me it's that his circumstances exceeded the capabilities of the gear so my conclusion from that is do not underestimate uc crashes like i did you know don't don't be going oh it's it's a lower speed it is a lower speed, but speed isn't all of the factor. It's the impact forces and how suddenly you stop. Speed doesn't kill. Sudden stops kills. <coughs> um, in order to mitigate the risk, in order to mitigate the damage of crashes, you want to make the crash... <coughs> Sorry, I just swallowed wrong. I'm not dying. Uh, I kind of am, but... You want to extend the length of time before impact. So um, a force, sudden stop, you get all of that force transferred into your body. Um, a force, sliding, sliding, dissipating all that energy and then impact, a lot less of the impact force is actually, you know what I mean. So anyways, um, don't, don't underestimate it like I did. Um, okay, so insoles. Sam recommended to me that I try the this has nothing to do with protection. <laughs> this is just uh, my feet were hurting after riding 140 miles standing. So uh, he said, oh, try the uh, footprint insoles. The It's all funky right now. I don't know what I did. I just pulled it out of my shoe. I haven't ridden in these yet. I've only stepped in it. I got this. I took out my other insole. I cut it, uh, used that as a template to cut out my shape. And then I just shoved it back in there and then I stepped in it and I was like, oh yeah, this, this feels nice, but I haven't tested it yet. But just to let you know, these are the Footprint King Foam Elites. I got the thicker one because I don't know, it's thicker, more armor, right? That should be good. These definitely sound impressive and they sound like they have a huge following and they sound like they are already proven in the skateboarding world. Um, it's used by NASA um the yeah this technology is used by nasa to protect their little their little droney computer thingies um 
Jaws Hamoki the Lion um, uses them and skateboard great Tony Hawk's favorite gear and all that. I don't know. It, they have a huge following and um, they seem like they are amazing. It says maximum impact protection, fluid protection X, exact same formula used by NASA, increases shoe energy absorption by 90% compared to 53% in other ones um they have videos showing the um the in the shock absorption of these things and this is how you see shock absorption so they take these insoles and they drop like this bowling ball on it right if you drop a bowling ball um down there's no shock absorption the bowling ball is going to bounce back up again because nothing absorbed that force so there's still enough energy to bounce it back up but you dropped it they dropped it on these insoles and it just I mean I think it bounced like like that so that's how much energy you can see how much energy that it absorbed and and then there's no more energy left for anything else and that is the same concept for everything else I've said over and over again shock absorption absorb that shock it's like a you know like a heat sink it's a shock sink you know shots shock sink and then um, you don't have any leftover energy to hurt you or it it lessens the energy amount so that it doesn't hurt your body so much because our body is actually very delicate I don't know about yours but mine is so anyways um, that's it I think I've gone over everything hope that helps thanks for joining me again today and I will talk to you guys later bye